Sharon from Be Divine Vintage. Welcome to my um, journal journey. If you remember on the first recording, I showed you how to make the journal cover from a small book and how to dye the fabrics and glue them onto the cover to make the cover. In the last number two of the program, I showed you how I made these pages. I have changed it slightly in that I thought that this um, little window here actually made a fabulous tuck spot. I, uh, you can see that I, I did the glossy accents on the robin and from the fairy woods from my porch print I've just put one of their little ephemera pieces inside there and tuck that in there. So this, oh sorry, this tag was over here but I moved it here because I do like the ribbon coming out of the side and I popped in an extra um, calling card, Victorian calling card. So today we are going to work further down the book here and we're going to convert this into a tree trunk. So let me show you the page um, dividers here. You can see that I've shabbed them up a bit and I've learnt this technique. There's another one here. Whoop, there it is, be still. From Sue Olson in the Innkeeper's Journal. So Sue has a great video showing you how to do that. Anyway, without further ado, let's get on. Let's move the glass and let's get messy. So first, let me sit down first of all. So first of all, I got a craft card um, label that had this in my own stash. And I'm going to put it in the journal upside down so that this part hangs out of the bottom. So I want it to look like a tree, tree bark. Um, I'm going to leave the nice side outwards because this will flip up and be available to see in the journal. So this side here is what I'm going to um, decorate. Now I've got some good old corrugated card and went ahead and peeling off to get this corrugated effect and I'm just going to tear this just a little bit bigger than my tag and a bit straighter at the top and I'm going to take it to the same length here which is around there so that is the size that I need so I am quickly going to, I'm using this tacky glue, uh, not tacky glue, this Beacon 3-in-1 because it glues very, very, sets very, very quickly. I'm going to put some glue, put that on there, line it up at the top and press it down. I was showing this recording to my mum and, uh, not this one, the last one that I did. And she went, oh, your hands are looking older. I said, oh, thanks, Mum. I said, but actually, I am I am getting older. I'm not that little girl anymore that used to uh, do art and craft with you all those years and years and years ago. So, sorry they're getting older, but that comes to us all. Um, right, that is glued on there. You can see there's the back. And there we are. Now, I could just paint that with my, um, what are they called, uh, acrylic paints, but I've decided to layer this up as this is a mixed media, decided to layer it up. So I've got some really old, in fact, it's probably antique paper. I'm just going to tear around to take the white off. This paper is very fragile. And it's French. 
thought it already had a start of the colours on there that I wanted. So, again, I'm only going to take this just a little bit bigger than my tag. So, let's... Uh, I like that, hey, that size tone. Let's just tear down. We can always tear more bits and pieces off as we go along. Let's not be shy. Now, for this, I am going to um, put some... Ooh. Hmm. I'm going to put a bit of just a bit of glue on here and I'll show you what I'm going to do. So I'm going to put a bit of glue like this. I'm going to stick on my paper and just give it a second. Now, as you push it down, you can start and just about see some of the lines of the um, corrugated card. I was thinking, you know, you could also, if you didn't want to use paper, or you didn't have paper to use, you could use some tissue. I've got some brown, it reminds me of pattern tissue, this. It's very, very, very thin um, tissue. You could put tissue on it. That would look quite nice. Um, oh, you don't have to put anything on it at all. Right, so where is my... Of course, you can never find your trusty bone folder just when you need it. And I put it out ready to use. Anyway, oh, here it is, peeping at me. So what I'm going to do is just run my bone folder down some of those uh, grooves that are in the corrugated card. Some come off, it's no worries, it's no worries. Because I wanted, you know, a rough bark texture. If you have a piece of bark that comes off a tree, it isn't normally all lovely and smooth. Well, it's not, not in my garden, it's not. Oh, we had some fun this year with a giant redwood. We, um... I went to America a number of years ago. Well, when the children were little and they're, they're older and married and what have you now. So we went to America and we brought this little tiny sapling. It must have only been the length of my finger of a giant redwood. And we put, planted it in the garden. Anyway, it loved our climate. And it grew and grew and grew and grew. Beautiful, beautiful tree. Absolutely beautiful. In fact, I'm looking at, at where it was cut off now in my garden. We had to get the um, tree surgeons in to take it down, sadly, because it was getting too big for a domestic garden. So um, I've got it all, <laughs> the um, trunk, in my garden. as wood slices all piled up in the corner, ready for when hubby does the, um, continues with the landscaping. Right, so that's on there. I also, have you seen this? Oh, where did that go? Scooted away and you saw all my mess. Right, this I uh, use as packaging. I think it's so, it looks like paper, but when you pull it, you get that marvellous effect. Love it. So I thought I might put a bit of this on too, for some added effect. I've been hoarding this thinking, how can I use it? I don't want it all on. Whoop! I think that just needs tightening up there. That's better. So let's tear that. I'm going to add... Oh, before I do that, I'm actually just going to use a little bit of clear gesso because I love the... Um, my brush. I love the effect that clear gesso gives when it's dry in that it's just a little bit grainy and I like that grey. For a tree I think that's a very appropriate texture to have so just pop that on there. That, Although it's white now it will dry clear. Oh it also helps to 
to go to take your paper down into those grooves as well. Right. Put the lid on that before I knock it over. Right, back to this. I'm going to put that on there. And <clears throat> let's just give this a very, very, very quick dry, this clear gesso. <laughs> take much at all. So now I'm going to just put some of this glue on again and put that on. And I, I want it the texture but I don't want I don't want it perfectly flat but I don't want it looking like a piece of <laughs> a piece of packing paper. When it's finished, let's take that over there because that seems to like it there. I'll glue that down a bit more there. Right, and then I also thought, mm, what could I put? Um, I was going to put some cheesecloth on. What fabric can I put on? I was going to put some cheesecloth. And then I came across this lace and I thought, ooh, this is some, a snippet of some coffee dye, dyed lace that I had from another project. So I think... I'm going to stick that on just to give me lots and lots more textures. So let's just uh, put some beads of glue on to stick that down. The funny thing is, um, we've got the giant redwood, had it all cut down, got the log slices, and then from the branches, we've cut. My husband cut them all into pieces for the log burner. Of course, I didn't know that you can't really burn a giant redwood. They're inflammable. And uh, so we've cut them all up for the log burner. And then <laughs> when we put them in, we couldn't work out why they wouldn't burn properly. See, we're not used to these trees in the UK. So I'd look on good old Google and there it was to say that it, they're not really flammable. Which is a good job, really, because we see some terrible forest fires, not just in America, but all over the world. But the thought of um, those giant redwoods, whew, that'd be one big fire. Right, there we go. So I've got the base now for my tree. So now I'm going to paint. Let me just turn this over. You see it's the same piece of parchment I used the other day. Right, so first of all, I've got the Alcohol Ink Moss, which is the one, it's the Ranger Moss Alcohol Ink. This is the one that I dyed the journal fabrics with. And I'm just sort of going to drip that on around sort of this bottom edge of this lace. Because I thought, yeah, you do get bits of green on trees, don't you? Ooh, I like that. Like it, like it, like it. And then I've got my trusty old Windsor & Newton raw umber. Oh, that's a bigger blob than I anticipated. I've got some Windsor & Newton uh, red oxide. Just put a tiny bit of that on. And I have got some white. So I'm going to take the big brush again. The big brush. Get some of this white out and put that on there. I actually really like that as it is. This. I think it looks really lovely as it is. Hmm. Anyway, let's get on with plan A. If needs to be, if plan A doesn't work, I can always go back to plan B, couldn't I? Right, so I'm just mixing some acrylics there. And I'm going to just start to apply them 
to my tree. Oh, like it. Like it, like it, like it. Ooh. So I'm on my own again today. My, oh, there we go. A bit of mixed, a bit of the uh, red oxide in there. Yeah, I'm on my own. My husband has knit to, had to nip into work. We have our own business. He's had to nip in there to do some plumbing repairs. And my daughter is at the hairdressers. She's a student nurse, but she's not on duty at the moment and she's knit to the hairdressers to have some wonderful creation. She uh, changes her hair colour more than anyone would ever know, honestly. Um, she's doing a project at the minute. Like a, It's not a dissertation, but it's a long written project about does... Uh, what a nurse looks like affect the care that the nurse gives or the perception of the nurse. So when I was a nurse many years ago, we used to, when I was a student in the morning, you had sort of an inspection by the ward sister. She would check your nails. She would check your hair was off your collar. She would check your shoes were shiny. She would check your bulk. <laughs> Uh, bottle was polished and all those sort of things your cap was straight and anyway now they don't they don't even have the uniforms they tend to wear scrubs the hairs any color they want to piercings we used to have one set of earrings that's all we want we're allowed that's all we wanted really was one set you didn't really wear more back in the back in the day but um I remember a friend of mine coming in with green hair and matron promptly sent her home and said, no, that is not appropriate and you don't come back and you're not getting paid until your hair is a natural colour. So does what you look like affect your perception of the care that nurses give? Does it? I was in A&E recently. Um, I had a problem. I'd never been to A&E as a patient so went into casualty doctor came to see me checked in blah 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 doctor came to see oh picking up some of that green as well there the doctor came to see me of course she was young because i'm getting older and she had purple hair and at first i thought <gasps> my doctor with purple hair actually she was She's absolutely superb. And there's no reason why the purple hair shouldn't have affected, did, affected her the care as a doctor. So, you know, actually, tattoos, purple hair, piercings. Does it really matter? Does it matter? Is it an age thing? I don't know. Let me know what you think. Let's try this off. some of it at the back look at it though it looks absolutely amazing loving that right i have got here some uh antique bronze distress stain i thought seeing as, seen as it's gardens of enchantment let's throw a bit of um glitter in there give that a good shake Oop. okay so my top's already off and 
Let's not spray. Let's not spray that. Okay. Should have checked that before I started. Let's just dab some bits on. Let's just drop bits on. Actually, I better go pick it up with this little brush. It's a shame that. So that's something I've just learned is always just check your uh, check that your sprays work before you do a video. <sighs> right, so there's some of the spray that isn't spray. Let's just get that out. Ooh, I like it, like it, like it. Um, I've got some on Vintage Photo Distress Oxide. This is the one that I used to um, re-ink re my ink pads. So I thought I'd just do a few drops of that on there as well. I'm just going to dry this and blow it around. Very quickly now, I was a half do. I thought I'd, the back would be all right, but it, it isn't. Using what's left of my paints here, I'm just painting over the back there. And what I'll have to do is stick on a piece of paper. I'm a bit under. Oh, here it is. It's getting a bit too red for me now. I'll have to stick a piece of paper on, which I haven't got any with me, but I will put a piece of uh, paper on the back there. So that you can write on it. I don't know why on earth I ever thought that it wouldn't come through to the back. I don't know. to the front when you're painting the back. Right, let's just fold uh, that away. Right, there we go. And let's just dry the back. It won't take long, bear with me. Let's just dry the back.
So just whilst that dries off a little bit more, just pop it to one side. Uh, get a good old baby wipe. You know, these baby wipes will wipe, seem to wipe anything off. Even where soap and water doesn't do a baby wipe. We'll take the majority off. Right, because I don't want to get this all over my work. Right. Right, so uh, people have asked me about the fairy woods and the shabby woods. I downloaded them from my porch prints, bought them on Etsy. Here are just some samples of the papers I've been using recently. Some little ephemeras. I think they're really pretty. Oh, there's the labels. These I'm going to use. I'm going to, I'll just put these to one side and remember what, to tell you what I'm going to do with those. Envelopes. More labels and tags. Look at these, how beautiful these are. Aren't they lovely, these fairies? I'm going to be using more of those. So I do think the shabby woods and the fairy woods went really well together. You get the pages as well to make a complete journal. Envelopes and flips and more tags and pockets. All the usual sorts of things, but very, very, very pretty. Very pretty indeed. Right, back to the journal. Here we are. Right. I am... Um, on these earlier pages that I've done, there's the tag that we did. Can you see I've got some little uh, green dots stamped around? So I haven't done that on this side. So I'm going to use this dotty um, stamp. I'm going to use the uh, Catherine Pooler Garden Party. I'm just going to just pop some ink on and I'm just going to randomly do some stamping. There's no rhyme or reason. Oh, got a bit of glue. Got a bit of glue on there. Ah, I can sort that out later. I just think these little little dots just give it just give it something else. So that is all I do. Just to dab onto my Catherine Pooler garden party. And there we go. I'm just randomly put the dots on. I've also been collecting together some bits and pieces for other pages in the journal. I've found this lovely sari trim that I got uh, from, I think it's pronounced Van Yeka Textiles. Got that. I found this in my stash. This is, um, see there's depth to it. This is bluebells and I think somebody had done this for a card and I bought some things and, and it was in there so I'm wondering what to do with this don't know whether it might end up on the back page there could be some sort of pocket I found uh, the amongst my things this mushrooms of Britain postcard an owl this I thought was lovely best wishes this is a happy new Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year from Alice and Alice. And then I found this um, from 1964, Austria. And it did have photos in, they were postcards. And I, I've took them out, but I have got them. But the photos have seen, but I've actually um, thought of something else I can do with them to actually decorate them, to put them back in here and to have this somewhere in the journal with lots of little journaling cards in it. So these are things that I'll be using in the future in this journal. Right, so back to where we are today. Now I've got here a P 
picture, this is an original picture of the Elm Fairy from Cecily Mary Baker. And I also found amongst um, some old pitch frames, this piece of laminate, which would have been sort of over a picture, but because it's old, vintage, it's quite um, tired looking. It's gone yellow, there's marks on it, but I think they look great. So I have cut my Elm Fairy to fit this exactly. So what I am going to do here, because I want this to be under the tree. So I'm going to take my crocodile. I'm going to speed myself up a bit because I do tend to ramble. So I'm going to take my crocodile and I'm going to put it exactly where I want it on my page. Let's get it all there. I don't want all the white bits showing. Exactly where I want it on my page. I am going to use the large hole punch and I'm going to punch one punch there. Make sure that stays lined up. And I'm going to punch another hole. <laughs> in fact, do you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to put my little from it in now so that I've got those lined up. I'm going to get a little green grommet, put that through and just work out which is the top and which is the base and just punch that. I am out of line slightly but never fear. That's there, that's there. So I am going to now, with my hole punch, punch another hole in this corner. Just get a green grommet, put that through. Oop! Oh, what have I done there? Let's take that out. Let's get another green grommet. I think I probably had that upside down. Top in the base. There we go. I don't want the white showing, I'm just going to cut down. off camera there so those now are held together like that I'm going to take another couple of green grommets but before I put them in these holes I collect I have a little jar with all my bits and strings and my hole savers etc here so I am going to strengthen these holes with these circles, put one there, just to give a bit of strength, because when everything's fastened onto here, it can be quite heavy. Put that onto there. <laughs> it says fingers, we like the fingers better. Where's it gone now? So yeah, back to the fingers. There we go. There we go. My glue is dripped. Let's just wipe it off. Right, so now I'm going to put some grommets in. <laughs> Everything's sticking now. I'm going to put some grommets in. Let's work out my top and my base. That's one. That's two. See if I can get in there. Oh, no, that one's gone skewed as well. This always happens when you're on camera, doesn't it? Things just go all wrong. Or when you're showing somebody what you're doing and what you're up to. Right, let's try that again. Right, base and top. 
There's the top. There's the base. Squash. There we go. That's right. That's those. So those will line up with that. So they'll fix onto there. So let's just get a couple of uh, brown ones. I'm actually going to get two different shades of brown out. Let's go wild. Two different greens let's have two different browns right so let's go back to the tag and just check that this is all dry it is I was going to put Pent over it with some uh, varnish, some matte varnish, but I don't, I don't think I need to. Right, so down here we need to re punch the hole of the tag. There it is. Oh, so I'm going to need another, another one of these. Another granite in the bottom there. Going through. Yeah, make sure it's gone through. And then top in the base. There we go. That's in there. Right. For good luck and posterity, I'm just going to blast this for another couple of minutes because I do not want this all over my journal any ink on my journal let's do it again the poem the Mary Cicely Mary Barker poem of the elm fairy which I wanted to put on here as though it had been nailed into the tree not that I prove of things not nailed into the tree then fixed onto the tree of the poem but can I for the life of me get my um, printer to work this morning no why not because my husband and son decided last night in my absence to use my computer to stream some football and now I cannot get my printer and my computer to talk to each other so oh I've got this I thought this would look nice on here it's a this side it's a Suffolk puff I believe they're called yo-yos in the United States I'm going to stick my Suffolk puff puff aka yo-yo on here for some extra interest and then I've got a little glass antique um, button which I have stitched some thread through because I always think they look so much nicer with thread so I'm going to pop that on there to dry so next what I need to do is to get my um, holes punched into this. Perhaps I should not have um, put my grommets in first. Let's see if I've got some, oh yeah, I've got pencil here. Just make the marks. And then take this, punch the holes, because I want them all to line up. Punch the holes. I'm going to tie them up all into the book to the journal. Uh, there. 
think it'll look really nice with the poem on the front and then you'll lift the, the tree and you'll have the fairy underneath. Um, right way up. One. Oh, my button fell off. Yes, I'm, I'm, I'm um, not good at... Oh, time, I'm quite impatient. I want things dry, I want things stuck, I want things glued, I want everything done all at the same time. Perhaps I should give more time, but, but I don't. I don't. Right, let's top and bare. Let's try this again. So I should have used a glue gun. Right, so now here we go, lining everything up. Make sure this is clean. Right, I've got some sari silk. This is a lavender colour. I decided to bring the lavender pastel into with the pink and the green, uh, just for some extra colour. This is from Paran Yarns who are based in the UK, you'll find them on Etsy, and they do the most amazing uh, hand-dyed sari silks, silk ribbons. They do lots of wools and things as well, but this one, can't remember the colour of this, but they do the likes of Unicorn, which is an amazing colour. Just all beautiful and sort of ombre um, fabric uh, ribbons. So let's find the end. And and <laughs> come on right so now i am going to pork this through now i haven't got my porky porky tool so i need to pork one end through here and i'm using a skewer because purely because i haven't got my porky tool with me Oh, it doesn't, just saying I'm not coming through. No, thank you. <laughs> Pocket tool would have been so much easier. Oh, oh. Ah. Just going to have to reset that now. I have just destroyed that. I'm going to stick a little bit of paper on the back. Never fear. Never fear. In fact, I could stick one of these circles on the back there. And ring. Punch it through. These things are sent to tryers, aren't they? I'm going to just do that. There we are. Fixed. Panic over. Right. I'm, I'm going to have a. I'm going to have a change attack. I'm going to push this through here. <laughs> Let's just rewind. Oh, got it. Got it. See. Then I'm going to push it through here. Am I? I'm going to push, try and just push the edge through. That's better. So that will line up with that. I'm going to pull plenty of fabric through. So let's just do this. And Let's do the same on the other side. I'm going to push that through there. When I pull the skewer out, it pulls the fabric back with it. Right, got it. <laughs> have I got it? Yes, I have. 
yes I have. Fabulous. Let's do this. Pull this back. Liking it, liking it. I'm then going to put the fabric through here. Oh. There we go. So that will lift up with that underneath it. And then let's get the journal and then I'm going to tie that onto there. Oh, yummy. Look at that. Yumza. So that will lift up. You have your fairy underneath in the photo frame and then underneath that will be journal in space. But also on the back of this tag here, I'm going to put a piece of paper for distressed up paper to write on and then on the front here will be the poem when I get my printer going so let's pop this through here then you can see what it's going to look like I just don't know why I didn't put my poker tool in with me at least it's the only thing I forgot side this is a mammoth task mammoth let's try again <laughs> you do not stick to the wood with the edge. Yeah. We're through. Sorry about that guys. Right. That is through. That is on there. That is there. There we go. So on the other side here I am just going to tie this in a little oh some of the paint must have been a little bit wet there but it doesn't that little bit of paint on there doesn't bother me and I want to bring this back through maybe there and there and I'm going to tie it actually sometimes I've learned this little trick it looks better when you tie things upside down the ball look hangs better Let's tie the bow, tie the bow, tie the bow, tie the bow, fab, fabby, there we go, there it hangs, oh I love that, absolutely love that, but what I will do is hang that outside of the journal, so when the journal's shut, you get that hanging, hanging outside matching up with this lavender ribbon so there you go a mixed media tag which will have a poem on which lifts oh perhaps i just need to loosen this a little bit i'll loosen it a little bit to reveal the elm fairy which then lifts to reveal journal in space so thank you i'm just going to loosen that knot Oh, back to these. I am going to cut some of these out, back them onto cardstock, and I'm going to make three little tuck spots on this page. So I'll back them on cardstock, glossy accents them, stick them on here, and there'll be three little tuck spots. So that'll be ready for next time. Hope you've enjoyed this process video. If you have, please cl uh, click subscribe, and we can get on to uh, part four of this journal next time i see you thank you very much bye